for the next for the next talk, we have two speakers. They come from uh, another from our sponsors, Scallion, which for some of you of you might be a new name, but uh, Scallion is what formerly uh, was in the thing and they have been supporting this conference for seven years now. So uh, we have two speakers. They will be giving, giving the talk uh, jointly, uh, Juan Antonio and Alejandro. And I will not say more, I leave you with them. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. Okay, did you know that humans landed on the moon using a computer with only two kilobytes of RAM memory and 32 kilobytes of ROM? Could you imagine in these days developing with this kind of restriction? Well, my name is, is Juan Antonio, I'm a software engineer and I've been programming uh, professionally for, uh, in several languages for more than 25 years, and more specifically with embedded system for more than 10 years. And I'm proud to say that my code is currently running in system all over the world. <coughs> Today, I would like to share with you some pieces of, of my experience. Well, but first of all, please give me a minute to introduce you our company guests, which pay the bills. Well, I'm sure that many of you are familiar with, with Indifen as a recurrent panel of this kind of meetings and an important player in the C++ uh, community. Nowadays, Indifen is part of Scallion. Scallion is an, is an international cons consultancy specialized in building solutions uh, based on technologies like cloud, uh, big data, artificial intelligence, and of course, embedded systems. Regarding our customers, I would like to remark the international position of Scallion uh, in many sectors like telecommunication, aeronautics, sorry, bank or finances. And also, I would like to note how proud we feel about the large technology, about all knowledge as, as that we have acquired over the years from, from more veteran technologies like C++ uh, development to mainstream ones like inter uh, artificial intelligence. And finally, as a head of C++ uh, Center of Excellence in Scallion, I want to put the focus in, in our expertise in C++ in multiple areas and different projects. For example, implementation of high performance libraries in distributed clusters, implementation of quantitative models like Monte Carlo simulations, Connection of different systems using C++. Develop uh, embedded systems uh, such as uh, security systems and home appliance software, and much more. Based on this C++ experience, I'm focusing on embedded uh, systems. Today, we are pleased to share with you some common situation of the real life and an experience that I'm certain, I'm sure that you found in your daily work. Okay, we have prepared some uh, use cases uh, that are going to, 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 to see where, where do I, you are going to see how to use C++ in a better way for embedded systems. These cases are a simulation of a real, a real life cases and we propose a solution for that. The first case, is a proposal of implementation using, uh, sorry, uh, it's a proposal of implementation of the problem of the double dispatching using variants, analyzing pros and cons. The second case is a proposal of a fast fail mechanism using type traits. The next one is an, an exercise, an experiment, uh, creating a random number generator using condition variables, promises, and coroutines and also to make a comparison uh, of their behavior. And the last point is a 
brief mention uh, about a piece that we usually consider that is overlooked, the binary file. Okay, to explain this case is deeply, uh, I'm pleased to introduce uh, to our C++ wizard, Alejandro. Please, Alejandro. Thank you, Juanan. Hello for all. Let me to present myself. My name is Alejandro Hidalgo. In the past years, I have been developing software for embedded devices and robotics at the Scallion Group and in different universities, of course, using C++. Currently, I'm a professor at the University of Malaga, but I'm also an active member of the C++ Center of Excellence of Scallion Group in Malaga. In the following slides, we are going to comment in a little more detail the problems and the solution to these problems that Juanan has introduced us a moment ago. But it's important to note that other solutions exist to solve this problem, and we have decided to use this one because uh, it's the solution we have used in our daily work, okay? So let's go. This first use case uh, is related with the double dispatching problem. The double dispatching is a mechanism to dispatch a function call to a specific function calls depending on the runtime types of two objects. In this case, we are going to emphasize on using variants in order to get a more elegant and a more maintainable code. So let's go. For this use case, we are going to imagine the following. A system that is composed about different type of devices. Each device needs to communicate each others. Communications require encoded messages. And this, and this encoding of the messages depends on both. First, on the device types involved in communications and on the direction of these messages. So, continue. Now we are going to see a solution that not using any built-in utils in C++ to solve the double dispatching problem. In the code snippet on the left side of the slide, we can see a generic code that defines a generic device and a generic encoded message. The encoded device, the generic device, sorry, entity implements the center function that grabs real sending to other devices. And with this approach, lines from six to eight, we can find some several forward declarations. And this is before using this approach, each device needs visibility on the other ones. So in this case, this piece of code shows a specific device implementation. Each specific device implementation needs to overload several send to functions. Each overloaded function in this system applies a valid and a different encoding to the message. And these functions implement, again, real sendings from the current device, device E in this case, to the remaining devices in the system. Well, well with this approach, we have several almost identical code in a specific devices classes. And this is because device depends each other, but Device, with this approach, must define all possibilities for sending messages, but this approach has several drawbacks. One of them is there are several distributed send to functions. Almost identical code is in many, in many files. Code is spread across many files too, and adding a new device involves changes at various points of code. So this code snip shows the main function. The main function, using this approach, devices simply send messages to other devices. And at the bottom of this slide, we can see an execution result to demonstrate that this code works fine. But now we are going what happens when using variants. This is a piece of code that is uh, almost identical to the, to the before. And um, we again define a generic message a generic encode message, and we define again a generic device with its send to function. 
but there are some differences. Using this approach, no forward declarations are needed. And this is because each device does not need visibility of the other ones. When using variants, the first thing we need to do is to define a variant that holds all, pos all possible device types in system. And we need to define all possible device pairs involved in communication in a single class file or structure we call visitor. This is the visitor pattern. Visitor overloads the parenthesis operator for all device pair combinations. The following piece of code is simply the remaining overload parenthesis operator and nothing more. Well, what happens now in main? Main function has now some difference. Firstly, each device type must be wrapped into a, pre a, a previously defined variant. This is in this case the device type. Devices now send messages to other ones using the variant visit. And visit is the responsible of telling the correct overloaded, overloaded parenthesis operator in the visitor class, depending on the device type that both variants hold. Well, again, this approach works fine. But when, you, when we use variants, we get some advantages and disadvantages using this approach. First one is double dispatching problem becomes easy when using variants. Code is simpler and classes do not depend each others. Now code is centralized in visitor and therefore code is more maintainable too. On the contrast, compile times are affected depending on the number of alternatives that variant holds. But compile times can be also affected if you use as the visit of the variant in several translation units. So well, let's go with the second use case. Second use case is a fast fail mechanism. In the following slides, we are going to try to explain what is the fast fail mechanism. Well, imagine a simple class hierarchy. In this hierarchy, class A has a virtual member function to string that convert it into string. Class B overrides the to string method, but class C does not override it. We are going to suppose that only those classes that override the to string member function will be translated into string with guarantees. If a child class does not override the to string method, the function parent, the parent's function, will be executed when calling it. But so calling to string from a child class that does not override this method is correct. But the procedure of translation to string will be executed without guarantees. Therefore, in order to avoid the misuse of the software, we can cause an early compile time error due to a semantic error. And this is the fast fail mechanism. The code snippet in the bottom of this slide shows a basic implementation of a fast fail mechanism using type traits. C++ introduced type checks at compile time in the type traits library. And as you can see in the code above, mixing <coughs> type traits, declared types, and static assertions, we can lead to a comp compile, compile time error, okay? Well, both, declaration, both declared types that appears in instructions returns as a type a pointer to a member function. And this assert fails if argument is false. And this occurs if and only if both pointers point to the same method. That is, when T class, that is a child class, does not override the to string method. The second parameter here is simply an error message for compiler output. But this problem, can be solved using C++ Finite, for example. Um, but this is more important that the use of type traits can be complex and can lead to a difficult code to understand. So perhaps 
using concepts could be a good idea to implement this type of mechanism. Well, the first use case conveys a study of performance when developing a random number generator using different approaches. Well, we are going to imagine a specific hardware for generating random numbers. Hardware should be as fast as possible. And every access to hardware should return a new, a new random number. Hardware calls are synchronous. And we are going to suppose that the C++ run function act as a call, as a call to hardware, okay? Our experiment is based on three, dif on three different approaches. One of them uses use condition variables, another one uses promises, and another one uses coroutines. Let's go. We're going to see the implementation that uses condition variables. This code snippet shows a condition variable based random number generator. This code, in this code, we can find a worker function that acts as a number producer. The worker code runs in a separated thread and it waits until another thread requests a new, a new random number. The inter-thread synchronization here is done via condition variables. So the main thread is the responsible of requesting new random numbers. Once 100 requests have been, one, 100 random numbers have been requested, all threads finish their work and the program ends. So we, are mesh, we, have, we measured the time to respond to this request in order to make a little study. But using condition variables, we can find some drawbacks. Code becomes complex, increases the chance of getting into that logs, and condition variables can be victims of two severe problems, lost wake-ups and spurious wake-ups. So let's go with implementation that use promises. Promises allow developers to, to implement a synchronous task. And in this case, for the random number generator, several promises are executed, and only the return of future is stored. After all promises have been executed, the main thread fetches all the new random number through the stored futures. But this approach has advantages and disadvantages too. On the, on the advantages side, we can say code is simpler, code is easier to understand, and condition variables problems disappear. On the contrast, more threads than when using condition variables are needed, and context switching when using threads impact on performance. Well, let's go with implementation that use coroutines. This code snippet shows a random number generator that has been implemented using coroutines. Note that this sample is, is have been extracted has been extracted from here from the CPP reference. We have not developed this code. Okay. But when using coroutines, only one separated thread is used. A coroutine is stopped until a new random number is requested. In this moment, the coroutine is resumed. The main thread calls the coroutine, resumes it, and gets the new random number. In this case, requests are simpler. The procedure to stop and resume a coroutine consists of one function call. But on the contrast, code is more complicated than when using promises. At first glance, coroutines are not easy to understand. And there are no built-in generic patterns for implementing coroutines in C++. So let's go to examine the obtained results with this little experiment. When using coroutines based implementations, Coroutine based implementations are faster than when using condition variables or promises. You can see this in this graph. Promises use several threads and context switches impact on performance. 
Condition variables are synchronous and this impact in time too. So in the end, we can say that solution that use condition variables is about two times faster than when using promises. When using coroutines, we obtain, we get that the solution is about 300, 330 times faster than when using uh, promises and 164 fast times faster than when using promises. Let's go with the executable file size. Con solution using condition variables generates an executable file that is around one and a half times larger in size than when using coroutines. Solution that uses promises generates an executable file that is about three times larger in size than when using condition variables. And solution using promises generates an executable file that is about four and a half times larger in size than when using coroutines. The executable file size is a very, it's very important to take it in mind when developing software, especially when developing software for embedded devices. And developers usually do not think in this when write code. So Juan is going to comment, up, to comment us some notes on this issue. So Juan, the floor is yours again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro. <coughs> okay, I'm going to continue with a, with a part that embedded systems could have a big impact, the binary file, and more specifically, the size of that binary file generated. When, when we usually are developing, we're taking account some factors, important factors as performance, CPU usage, memory usage, uh, uh, memory leaks management, and a lot more that are very important. But we often, we often overlook factors such as the size of the binary size, or the binary file, sorry, that we are generating when, when compiled. We are so uh, potential issues uh, derived from the binary file oversizing. First, you have to consider that embedded system has uh, have limited resource. Then, we're going to focus on four pay points. Memory, storage, network, and maintenance operations. Regarding memory, a large binary file reduce the amount of memory, the available, mem sorry, <coughs> the available memory for processes. And perhaps it could affect to the overall system performance. A large, a, a more, that means that more memory used by all code implies less memory uh, for the processes in execution time. The next point, from the point of view of storage, we, we consider storage the memory that persists or, or binary file in our, in our device. For example, a flash memory, a ROM memory. A storage, that storage size are going to determine the max size of all code and finally the growth capacity of our, our software. Then oversize of this binary file will limit our, our software update and fixes. Talking about the network, our devices could have, our devices could have different types of, of network, like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, infrared, with, with different bandwidth. Larger binary files implies more time to transmit the binary file to our device. Then, then that increase the possibility of failures during, during the transmission. Uninten an unintensive use of the bandwidth could affect to the normal operation of the device. Imagine that you have to, to upgrade a device that are running continuously and you have to stop, stop the, its operation to upgrade it. Imagine if it's a critical system. All of these, all of these points, 
uh, affect to, to the maintenance and update operation. Upgrades need to be planned and strictly controlled. If a binary, a binary update is very intrusive, okay, the process of upgrading is very intrusive, intrusive, then you are going to need physical updates, go physically to the device location, that implies more cost for your company, backup device, also that suppose more cost for your company, and, uh, and you are going to need extra resources. All of this point could be dangerous if you are talking about critical systems. And the last one, the last point that we consider very, very important is that binary, the binary oversizing could lead to deprecated hardware in a short time. That means that all devices cannot be upgraded or, and in the worst case, you, can, uh, you cannot upgrade for bug fixes. Okay, we are going to say, to, to show a little example, okay? That's the same piece of code, but uh, only a different is the definition of array, uh, using an array directly or a vector, okay? One of, it's an stupid example. It's a basic, a basic example with, a with the only difference of definition of the, of, of the, of the variable array test, okay? What happened here? From a point of view of functionality, maybe are you use, it's, it's the same. You can use vector or array. I'm not, I'm not saying that vector, is, uh, that array is, is better than that vector. It doesn't matter. That, that I say with this, that when you compile your file, the binary file of the solution based on, <coughs> the, the, uh, based on vector is larger than the solution with array. When you program for, for embedded system, you have to be very careful when you use Lord, the result that you have. That means that you choose the result expertly. Well, I think this is the best forum to, to write our, our wish list for the future revisions of, 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 the, of the C++ standard, and we have some wishes, okay? First one is an an old demand, like a reflection building mechanism, okay? I know we, it's, you are working on this, but I, I think it's good to have a little reminder, okay? The next one is a set of tools for using a, a enum, enum, enum class easily. Uh, for example, to transform, to convert enums to strings, for example. And the last one, as I say, as I saw my, my, my colleague, uh, generic templates in, in, in the STL for common coroutine based application. For example, a, the, a generator template or a generator, okay? So we are on the end. Thank you for, thank you for, for your attention. If you have some question. Thank you very much. Questions? Yeah, thanks for the talk. I was going to ask in slide uh, 51, I think, uh, when you were talking about the comparison between a student vector and, yeah. and the chart directly. Uh, basically, you are going from a C++ class that is the vector to a to a basic array that can be write, written in C. Uh, what is? Uh, have you done the comparison? This one? No, no, the no, one fifty one. Ah, okay, sorry. So, have you done any comparison writing directly the software in C to see what impact the size of the binary has? So, sorry. sorry, that example, for example, could. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's at the end. Sorry. Yeah. Ah, yes. So here you are basically changing the the stud vector by yep. char. Uh, so instead of using IO stream and std cl, uh, using printf, for example. So basically going back to C. Yep. 
I, I, I don't, I, I think it's not the problem. What, what, what uh, the, the type that you're using here, that, that means with this, with the same piece of code, are generating different size, uh, size of your binary code. It's not important. It's not important a vector or char, a right char. It's not important in this in, in this case. Yeah, yeah. The important that do when you program for for embedded system, you have to choose wisely exactly the type that you want to use. For example, you can you you shouldn't use vector if you not using the features of vector. So yeah. if you only have a little storage, you don't need to use vector because vector as as a, as a template are generating code that you are not using. Yeah. That's, that's that the mean with this kind of... Yeah, so uh, basically if you have a software written in C++, uh, have you checked if writing the same program in C, it, if it has any kind of impact in the binary size? So do, the same do, see, do, the do, same do, do you mean you see in, in instead yeah. of C++? So. I don't understand, sorry. I, I'm saying just yes, writing the same piece of software yeah, yeah. Yeah, instead of in C++, because you are concerned about the binary size, using any kind of other language like C, ah, so okay. you see the size of the, of the final binary size. Of the, course, it's the, the same thing. You can, use, you can use exactly the, 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 the uh, other language, uh, you can use other resources, but you have, you have to consider to use the correct language, the, the correct the, the correct resource that in this case we are talking about uh, C++ and I'm focused on C++ of course, but but I mean that no it's not important. The example the example is something stupid. The important is that you be conscious about the 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 resource that are you using, okay? But because usually when you are programming, you are, you are conscious about the memory, about the memory leaks, about a lot of things. Even the, your code is more clean, cleaner than, but usually we compile and, and I say, okay, it's perfect. My, we compile um, the problem is if the other people. Okay, thanks. Okay, I'm going to put me in the queue. So uh, I will start with which probably is an unpopular opinion. <laughs> so, C almost never is the right answer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. That, that was the first thing uh, to say. Second, uh, micro benchmarking is dangerous. And in, in this case, uh, the, over, the overhead is basically that you are introducing code that you essentially need <coughs> to create and destroy the vector. Uh, a couple of things about, uh, about uh, this uh, additional code that is uh, interesting. There you have 1,000. When I move to 1 million, then the first solution is unfeasible because you cannot allocate that uh, on the stack. True. So that is one thing. Second thing. If you are really building a real application, you will have the ST, STL code generated anyway. So the overhead evaporates. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, third, yeah, I, I understand. I, yeah. I, I understand exactly yeah. this. The, this the what, uh, while this is not uh, opposing that only metrics tell you the truth and that you should measure and then uh, make the decision. Exactly. Exactly. And my final point is, please, everybody, never use a row array. You have <laughs> STD array. So <laughs> STD array, yeah. ne never a plain, old-fashioned C stuff that we are not interested in. <laughs> and finally, if you are really concerned about performance with I.O., you have a FMT library, which is faster than C printf. So printf is not the fastest way of printing things. So now next in the queue, yes, Joaquin. <laughs> Thank you for the talk to both of you. Uh, it is uh, really interesting and uh, also, uh, yeah, 
uh, uh, IC that you, uh, that you just started uh, Juan and in, uh, with systems with uh, 48 uh, kilobytes yeah. that uh, we are in the same uh, the same age so we had to to um, mm -hmm. to keep in mind all the things that you that you mentioned but uh, one uh, so for the um, a random generator yep. that uh, you have uh, you, you propose uh, three uh, three different um, uh, approaches uh, you talk about um, time and also you talk about uh, binary size uh, what about about the the knowledge of the people for its uh, for its um, uh, approach and also the development time for its approach Sorry. We have not measured these parameters because uh, our idea for this uh, presentation is to do a little experiment to demonstrate or trying to do a different point of view about uh, when you use coroutines, uh, promises, or condition variables. And this experiment in particular is a very little experiment to extract a few a little of data sets and we have not uh, thought in, in this type of parameters but really uh, they could be very interesting to to consider for the next uh, for the next one experiment perhaps so thank you very much by the way I, oh, I, I'm also a ZX spectrum guy that was my first computer <laughs> yeah um, I uh, first of all, with the with the compile time on the uh, variant, like the Cartesian product, uh, have you have you guys tried other variant implementations? Because the standard implementation is very slow, and is this actually a, a problem for your for your? Uh, <laughs> yes, you are referring to the number of alternatives of variant when you use visit in in different translation units. In in our daily work. It's a problem we have suffered, and uh, at the end we need to move uh, all visitors. And the most suitable case is to put it in one uh, translation unit. Uh, we suppose compiler uh, tries to calculate all possible combination when using variants, and you use the visit in different translation units. You are forcing the compiler to recalculate it again and again, and this is the reason to put. Uh, this assertion presentation it's uh, uh, one tip in order to take into account when developing software using variant but uh, nothing more intending with this yeah um the second question i had was uh, you gave a bunch of metrics but you didn't say what uh, compiler optimizations were used to make those metrics i I would argue that they would be very different if you used uh, a modern compiler with uh, good optimization. <laughs> um. uh, when when we design this this these approaches, we try to make almost uh, the same identical code uh, for the for the, for different cases in order to uh, measure it in the same condition and. Um, Perhaps our study is not perfect. Uh, possible, it's possible there are uh, better experiments or best 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 experiment. But uh, with this case, uh, it's only a little study to uh, take a first uh, a first view or a first idea of what what happens when we use this one and what happens when we when use. Question is which compiler version? And which optimization flags do you use? Yes, we use uh, GCC nine. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. Nine, and yeah. we compile with the flag for optimization. But if I'm I if if true, we developed this this example some time ago, and I not remember the exact version yeah, no, of the yeah. compiler. I I'm sorry, for, sorry for sorry for that. My general point is, I, I agree that. Uh, you should be conscious of the binary size, but uh, yes, when using different what components. actually influences that is very dependent on uh, um, whether you link time optimize, Unity builds, uh, et cetera, et cetera. 
And to the to the point uh, uh, earlier by the other uh, questioner about C, um, we've actually benchmarked a lot of C versus C++ implementations doing the same thing, and C++ wins hands down, uh, like at least on microcontrollers in the way we write code, but it wins by a lot. I have fun, I have challenged my colleagues in the department. Somebody brings me a C program, and I will make in C++. In the worst case, as fast, usually faster. Uh, I've been waiting for 10 years. <laughs> uh, what is, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, what is your stance on uh, using uh, runtime type information and exceptions for embedded code? Is this something you can live with or are you concerned about uh, performance or binary size? How, how's how's your experience? Huh? We we used to we, we used to use uh, exception when the, with when developing software for embedded devices in order to control uh, some situations that uh, can be dangerous. But in this uh, example code that we have presented here, we have not used uh, exceptions. Perhaps uh, if you use accept exceptions. Uh, the result of the study will, will be different, but uh, yeah. yeah. Do you compile with exceptions enabled? Uh, yes, or yes, we compile with exception enabled. And uh, you don't have any problem with that? I mean, because uh, that's like a recurring theme with the embedded code that people are not very uh, happy about the uh, no real-time guarantees in, in, with exception enabled code, etc. so you are okay with that? Okay, okay. good, thank you. Uh, yes, I have actually also a question about optimization flex, maybe a bit more generic. Uh, so usually people use like optimization two or three in their uh, projects, but uh, with this binary file size for you, it could make sense to use a size optimization. So I just wonder whether you tried it and uh, maybe you have any idea when uh, other people should use it whether it makes sense to use this kind of optimization. So OS, I mean. Uh, yeah, so I, I will repeat. So I, uh, most of the people, they use O2 or O3 optimization. Instead of minus O size. Exactly. So I wonder, uh, and, and in the presentation, uh, you mentioned that you care about binary size. So for you, it could make sense to use uh, uh, size optimization. So I wonder uh, whether uh, you have any guidelines w when it makes sense. Uh, um, yeah, and how how does it compare to O2 and O3? Thanks. Well, I I, thi I think I don't know your opinion, but I think that measuring size optimization is interesting. The issue you may find is that probably you optimize for size and then you are the optimizing for speed. So there is a trade-off there, but needs to be measured. Uh, in, indeed, uh, uh, everything needs to be measured, but when you optimize for size, I mean, so fr from my perspective, if you have a bottleneck on uh, instruction uh, cache, then it makes sense to optimize for size. Um, but, uh, yeah, so so when you need to make your binary smaller, potentially you can even win uh, when you have O3, uh, but uh, yeah, okay, thanks. Any opinion on that? Or? I think that, that my opinion is that you have to balance, it, as you say, you have to balance the, 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 the size of the binary or, or you have to have better performance or better uh, memory utilization. You have to balance always and must be to be measured, of course. So, last question. Yes, thank you. Um, just a thing about the, the vector. I think the, you said that was an embedded example, or I am, I think the, the actual issue is the, in the vector or any container, you are using the, the heap and in embedded system, Generally, that is uh, completely avoided because of the, perhaps you don't have heap or because the time 
allocation. For example, in the train, we can use that. It's completely available. absolutely. You, you you have to that reserve. Is, uh, you have no, to reserve your resource uh, before using. It. Yeah, first reserve the resource, the, the the memory of the resource, and and then use it. Yeah, I am. I, I agree. Let me point out that uh, even in an embedded system, you can use std vector. The only thing is that you should not use the std allocator, but you can use a stack allocator or an array allocator or some other allocator, and then you can still get the benefit. Yeah, sure. Yeah, completely agreed. So I think you brought a number of very interesting questions. So thank you very much. Thank you.